Good morning, beautiful people. So I've been having this conversation with my clients lately. Um, and I just wanted to make a video on it really quick. So, you know, there's been one of my guilty pleasures is watching like hairstylists and client horror stories. And while they're entertaining, they also kind of keep me on my toes because I myself wasn't perfect. You know, I made mistakes. I was toxic at one point. And, um, you know, I had to just like anything else you want in life, had to make the effort um, to, and make changes to be better and do different. Right. So um, my let me start by saying all of these, everything that I have to say, of course, is based on my own personal opinion and experience behind the chair. I am not here to bash any hairstylists, bash any clients, you know, but I believe that by at least starting the dialogue, we could somehow reach like a certain understanding for each other, right? So what I've gathered from these stories, obviously, is the fact that usually there's someone somewhere feeling entitled, lacking accountability, and, um, oh, I'm sorry, um, feeling entitled, lacking accountability, and usually has like no overall concern or care for um, inconveniencing the other person or giving the other person an unfavorable experience, right? So, um, I would like to start, well, I'm, I, I want to start from my perspective as a hairstylist, but I've been on both sides, so of course I'm going to kind of jump around here and there. But um, first and foremost, I want to say that I believe that a lot of the disconnect that we have with each other comes from us treating each other from a space of what someone else did to us. So for instance, um, you know, hairstylists have these sets of rules based on what someone has done in the past as an effort to avoid these things in the future, right? Um, and at least for myself, I have a great clientele and I don't have too many issues with my rules not being respected or my policies not being respected or applied. Um, it does happen very rarely, but it's not like, for me, it's not anything that's like a problem, you know? It's just one of those like, you know, I completely understand someone may have a big event coming up, someone may have something important going on, and they may not have intentionally showed up late, but you know, they could care less about the fact that this person that's after them, you may run late into their appointment because they want what they want. Sometimes also when people are angry or they're upset, they're not their rational uh, their rational way of thinking is not is not working at the moment. Or it's not that's not the part of their brain that they're using at the time, right? Same thing with clients. You have a lot of clients that are very resistant to the new way of things because of what their experiences have been with other people. So I've noticed as black people, we tend to do this thing where when we have one ex one bad experience with somebody, we group everybody together. So for instance, I have about 16,000 followers on Instagram, right? And I, for, by some people's standards, are considered an Instagram stylist. Well, what happens is, is when you go to somebody, let's say that you guys go to this, this popular girl and you have a bad experience with her, then you go, oh, well, this is why I don't go to these Instagram stylists. Okay, but at the end of the day, Instagram doesn't make the stylist a stylist. I always say, vet the person that you're going to. Don't go to this person because they're popular. I know people that do celebrity hair behind the scenes and they're making a big bag and they're not, um, you know, they probably only have 400 followers. They just don't happen to be popular on social media. If someone's gonna be trash, they're gonna be trash. Their follower account has nothing to do with it. All that's probably done in that case is just um, emphasize or bring out who they already were. Um, same thing with like clients. You know, there are some clients I get a lot of like, oh, you know, I miss the old school days where I could just call and come into the shop okay well there's still shops that operate that way but if i do things the way that i do things you don't get to come in and try to change the way that i do things right there's i always say god gives us variety we have so many options where you don't need to go to somebody and tell somebody what they need to do if you like me if you are interested in me and my service you're interested in me and the way that i do things you're interested in the results the way that i do things produces the results that you like so it's kind of unfair and unnecessary, honestly, to come in and try to tell me that this is how I'm supposed to be doing things because this is what works for you. 
I went through that phase of trying to do everything to please everybody. And honestly, you guys, it got me used. It got me overworked, underpaid, and depressed. Also, you have a lot of clients that are like, well, if you say, hey, you got to pay me $50, turn around, jump in a circle, and wag your tail, clients will do that shit for an appointment, but they're taking advantage of it as well. You know, like as a hairstylist, I can admit that some of these policies are crazy as hell. You know, and then some of the way that um, you guys are being treated is unfair. I also understand that for a lot of you, you guys were not blessed with the gift to be able to do your own hair, but you were blessed with the funds to get your hair done, right? And so um, there's times where you may have a big event happening or you may have, you may just want your hair done and you shouldn't have to necessarily jump through loops and hurdles to get your hair done. You shouldn't have to deal with attitude to get your hair done. You shouldn't have to deal with someone being rude and condescending when you are taking the time out of your day and wanting to patronize that business and spend money with that person. So you guys see what I mean? Like I do understand both sides. And for me, there's always a duality. There's always a, okay, I understand this, but this, it's just how it works, right? Um, for myself, I always say that hair obviously is a luxury service. To black women, yes, we look at it as a need. The reason why I say this is because um, I feel like a lot of clients, and you guys can correct me, but I hear this a lot in my chair. A lot of clients really don't give a damn about what they have to spend on their service. You get some that'll complain or you'll get some that'll be like, I would never spend this on this. But for the majority of clients, one thing that we will splurge on is our hair, our lashes, our nails, you know, what have you. When we want something, we will literally move heaven and earth to get the things that we want, right? But I feel like on the other side of that, as service providers, we have to do a better job of remembering ourselves that these people are moving heaven and earth to come and see us. We don't know their situations. You know, um, we are in a recession right now. Money is funny, everything has doubled in price. So if someone is taking, we don't know people are moving their rent money around, they bill money, however they're getting their money really isn't our concern. But the fact that someone is taking the money that they could be spending on something else and patronizing our business, we should be grateful for that and we should be teaching, treating our clients as such. I also believe that as a service provider, we need to change our mindsets and how we think and deal about, think about and deal with the people that we are working with, right? Every client is not a bad client. Every client is not an asshole. Every client is not cheap. Every client is not disrespectful. And we are grouping sometimes these clients into this one um, pot and going all of them are all the same, which is not true. I have clients that will, um, you know, they'll maybe maybe they need me to be a little lenient with the last minute change. And just because I made that last minute change for them, whereas maybe in my policy I wouldn't do that, they tip extra. I'm not saying that everything like you got to go against the grain just to get paid extra. That's not what I mean. But I do believe that just like we write the rules for our business, we can also exercise a little discernment. We can also be a little more understanding. And this is coming from somebody that's really strict on their policy. We have to learn to know the difference between, okay, this person is trying to play me. And you know what? This person just probably just really had a, a, a bad day. Or this person, you know, maybe nothing is going right. Prime example, I'll, I'll, I'll use my client from yesterday. Um, she has been like her and her daughters um, started coming to me like over 10 years ago. I never had an issue with anyone being late. I never had an issue with anybody debating my policies. I never had an issue with them at all. And yesterday, her appointment was for 10 a.m. And um, she missed, uh, she made a mistake and she thought that her appointment was for 10.30. So I shot her a text message and she reiterated like my appointment's for 10.30 and I was like, no ma'am, it's for 10 and I sent her the information. Well, due to her thinking that it was 10.30, she ended up being late. And at some point we were almost like an hour late into the appointment. So instead of canceling her, which I could have done, well, I actually did at first, but then we kind of negotiated something. She was on, Miss Mamas is on a flight to Cancun this morning or today. It may not be this morning, but today. Um, and at first she was like, well, you know, well, can we just do the braids bigger? And I was like, yeah, sure. But I just didn't, I don't, I don't like to rush through anyone's service. So instead I offered her another service. I happen to have the colors that she requested um, in a different type of hair. And I just gave her five stitch braids. We put them things in a bun. That way she can be in Mexico, y'all, in the heat, 
being cute, not having to worry about anything. And because I was willing to take her anyway, and because I was willing to work with her, I got tipped extra on top of the fact that she paid for the original service that she booked, not the other service that she ended up having to get due to time restraints, right? So I'm not saying let people walk all over you, but when these are the people that are like helping you keep your lights on, when these are the people that are, are sewing into your business, when these are the people that are consistently showing gratitude, sending you a kind word, referring people to you, like let's not be so quick to be like, you know, BF you, like this is what it is, whatever, whatever, you know? And so for myself, I always tell people like, I got better in my business when I healed from the things that upset me from other people. I realized that I was treating my clients like what someone else in the past did. It's okay to have rules and regulations, right? It's okay to have policies. Everybody has them, but make them make sense, you know? And also, I say this in a lot of videos, but if you are um, setting certain rules and policies for clients, be sure that you're doing them for yourself, you know? So for myself, if I, um, I have a late policy for my clients. If you're 15 minutes, you're over 15 minutes late, I cancel you because I tend to work back to back. Um, but if I am late, I have to discount you. You know, there's a lot of times where clients really do feel like, okay, you're just here to take my money. You don't care about me. And granted, yes, this is a business, but this is a business where we are having, you know, physical interaction with our clients. They come to us to feel better about themselves. They come to us to feel beautiful. They come to us to relax and be pampered and taken care of. And I feel like the, the pampering part of the service is what's lacking nowadays. I had a client come to me and she told me that she had gone to uh, um, someone that I used to refer people to back in the day and that the girl did not speak to her. The girl like um, snatched her hair out of her hand. The entire service did not talk to her, but talked to everybody else in the shop. And it's just like, when did we become um, so impersonal? You know, and I explained to her, I said, you know what? Knowing that young lady, she's gone through a lot of things, but it's not an excuse to be rude to you as you haven't done anything to her. And I always have to like remind myself of that sometimes. Maybe somebody says something that triggers me. Maybe somebody did something that triggers me. But this is where like, we gotta put our big girl panties on to speak up. Hey, I know you didn't mean any harm, but that makes me a little uncomfortable. Hey, you know what? That's not really a conversation that I'm willing to have. You're gonna get one of two things. Either the client is gonna go, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't realize I came off that way, you know? Or they're just not gonna come back. I got some clients where, or I've had some clients in the past where they get a little too personal. And when I explain to them that this is not, that's too personal for me, maybe in their head, like they had a friend, we had a friendship that I didn't agree to, who knows? And they get, maybe they, they feel a little embarrassed and so they never return when there's no hard feelings, but you just never know. You don't know what people are going through. And so the way for me I look at it is if, if your whole day is going wrong, I want to be the one good thing that went right. I want to be the one thing that changes your day around, right? So, you know, I feel like as a collective, we need to do better with how we deal with each other on both sides, you know? Like, I understand on both sides that things happen. But, you know, as stylists, we have to understand that, you know, yes, when if you if a client has been looking forward to her appointment and you cancel her, she's going to be disappointed. She probably is going to try to negotiate another date with you. I've noticed, too, that I get a lot of clients that will come to me and tell me, like, I understand that things happen, but, you know, she just cancel me and not say anything, you know, and it's like, bro, like, if you're going to cancel the client, I understand that things come up. Hit on want a reschedule date. I do it all the time. My books are open a year in advance. There's going to be something that comes up. There's going to be a life event or something that comes up where I may have to move somebody around. But they don't, most of the time, clients don't give a shit as long as they're still getting their hair done. You know? And, and a lot of the time, we as stylists go, oh, clients expect us to be robots. But let's keep it a thousand. We expect clients to be robots too. We're the same ones that be like, don't be late. Don't be on time. Come, you know, there's that whole come wash and blow dry culture that I don't really subscribe to. I don't judge. Everybody's thing is everything. But, you know, it's like we got to we have to start being um, willing to give what we are asking. And a lot of the time it's not working that way. We've been very do as I say and not as I do. And like I said, if we are setting boundaries, because I can I can hear it now. Oh, well, what about them? What about them? If we are setting boundaries we won't end up in these unfavorable situations because it won't go that far. Um, you know, so, but if you're looking for certain behaviors, you're going to manifest that into your business. I don't look at a client and go, this one's going to be some bullshit. No. And I tell people too, and that's another thing that I want to touch on is picking and choosing your battles with these people. 
or picking and choosing your battles with clients, right? You're gonna get the irate client. You're gonna get the asshole client. You're gonna get the client that's just uber judgmental and probably fucking talks too much. It happens. But what you don't do is you don't need to escalate the situation further. So a lot of us get these crazy ass clients that, you know, they want to call state board on you. They want to keep showing up to your business. They want to confront you. They want to do the whole fucking nine. A lot of that could be avoided if you would just take them and block them later. So if a client comes in and you know, okay, this client's going to be a red flag. Still, what I do, this is my little hack, if you want to call it that. I will give a person the best service that I could possibly provide to them. And then I'm going to block the fuck out of them. And I'm going to tell you why. Because a lot of people are entitled. A lot of people have things going on. A lot of people feel like, I don't give a fuck if your arm is falling off. Do my hair. And a lot of, there are a lot of people out there that don't look at us as people. They could give a fuck what we have going on. It's not for us to take personal though. Understand that these are how these people are and, and let that shit fucking go in the wind, right? But if you got a client that comes in and there's a red flag, it's a lot easier to just service that client, get them out of your chair, still thank them for their service, and then just block them from booking. You don't have to see them again. Believe me, I've done it. it. Just make life easier on yourself. Not everything has to be an argument, a fight, or a debate. You know, and then we have to also understand that some people don't come from the same side of the tracks that we come from. So even when you're trying to deal with them with a certain level of respect and sense, they probably don't respect it because they don't speak that language. And it's just what it is, you know? Um, same thing with like with my clients, you know? Um, there's a lot of you guys that are amazing the perfect freaking ideal client if you run into a hairstylist and you feel like something is not right girl take your money and get stop telling me like oh well i just stayed because i paid a deposit and i couldn't get my deposit back bull fucking shit you can get your deposit back from anybody even if somebody pay even if you pay somebody zell and they don't want to send the money back and you can't get it fucking you can't follow a dispute take them motherfuckers to court no one is stuck with anything Providers, if you have clients that are doing chargebacks and you know that it is fraud, hire a PI and take their asses to court. That's another thing. Let's stop bashing each other on the internet. We got enough of that coming from our counterparts. We got enough of that coming from those that like to steal our culture and then repurpose it. Let's not do it to each other. Clients, if you don't like someone's rules, policies, prices, do not patronize their business stylist if you do not like how certain clients are doing things don't fucking take that client let's start aligning ourselves with the things that we want so i don't focus on i don't want this type of client no i focus on the kind of client that i want which is why i get more of that i don't have too many late clients i rarely ever get flakes ever if i get a no call no show like nine times out of ten that was somebody that was like girl i was in an accident and i was in the hospital I don't get a lot of those. Why? Because I don't complain about clients fucking flaking. My business has not been slow by the grace of God. My business has not been slow. I ain't had no issues. I ain't had, there's not much that I complain about. Like, and because I'm not always complaining anymore, I'm not getting those clients that I complain about. There's going to be some people that come by my page and be like, you know what? I really want to book with her, but she got so many rules for me. Wonderful then that just means that that's not, I'm not the stylist for them and they're not the client for me. We got to do better. Let's start respecting each other and respecting each other's um, opinions and feelings towards things without like, you know, like beating each other over the head with how we feel about things. It's okay to not like how someone runs their business. It's okay to not want to book with somebody that has a booking site. A lot of older women, they don't want to go. They're going to use every excuse in the book about how they don't use the internet. They'll order from Amazon left and right, but they don't want to click on a site to book something. That's okay. That's not the client for you. There are still salons that take walk-ins. There are still salons that are old school as hell where you can pick up a phone, call a landline, and someone shows up. Just patronize those. You know, there are still clients out there. Believe me, I got a, a whole arsenal of them. There are still clients out there that show up on time. They pay, they tip, they, they show their appreciation for you. They promote their business. They bring their family members to you. They refer you like they look out. Let's focus on that type. Let's stop arguing with who doesn't respect our business. Don't even pay them no mind. People come and tell me their opinion every day. And I just go, thank you so much for sharing. I'll take that into consideration. And then I go to mind my business period. 
you know i think that like you know if we could just remember that everyone is entitled to how they feel about things and treat each other as such things would be a lot better for all of us all the way around that is my ted talk for today i will talk to y'all later bye